look at our group stages uh for this time let's look at our standings uh for the groups that we're going to be playing on uh today so argentina is already at six points thailand is at four points ecuador at one point and austria at uh zero points so at this point i guess we could both agree that argentina and uh thailand is already you know this the game that they're gonna be playing uh today is just more of an exhibition match you know to showcase mm. what we are going to have on the next stage of the tournament and of course that goes to show uh, that goes as well for the next one so let's now take a look at uh, our first game for today it is Thailand versus Argentina. Here's a standing. Right now, there's four points for uh, Thailand, and Argentina, quite unfortunately, only has one. And they still have, you know, they still they could still get four more points, maybe get back up, you know, against uh, Thailand. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's as you said, a, a bit of a showcase and exhibition of these two teams that have been doing so mm -hmm. well. And uh, you know, it's always one of those things in the group stages. Uh, you see uh, two teams that are performing the best and you kind of wonder what's going to happen when those two teams that have emerged uh, victorious already in the uh, tournament, what happens when they go up against each other. Uh, it looks like that's mm -hmm. uh, going to Thailand this time. But, you know, it's it's good to see that there's a bit of a mix of... Uh, Pokemon coming out from Thailand, and that they're becoming, uh, they're they're having success uh, in their matchups. Uh, you can see some Evoltal and some uh, Giratina. Looks like Origin Form mm -hmm. uh, coming out from the uh, Thailand team, which is, you know, when you've got these kind of last matches where both teams have qualified, you can you can let the reins go, have a little bit of fun, test the waters, uh, see what what some different Pokemon uh, have to offer, especially in these restricted formats. So uh, good mm -hmm. to see that coming from Thailand and the, the success coming out there. And uh, hopefully we've got some exciting uh, team archetypes coming from our match today between these two teams. Right. So now let us show our audiences the players that we're going to have. And for Argentina, it is going to be Izzy. Uh, Bustamante, you know, 2018 World Championships competitor, 2015 Top 8 Buenos Aires Regionals, uh, part of the Top 8, and of course, bringing down with the Eveltel, we have the Incineroar, we have Richie Alecki, we have the Among Us, we have the Araquanid, and of course, Staka Daka. Yeah, I really like the um, the use of Eveltal generally. It's one of those Pokemon, especially these days, that's really difficult to uh, use. It's great against every Pokemon uh, on the f of the field that's usually not either electric or uh, usually fairy type. So things like Zacian and Xerneas and Regilecki, it tends to struggle with. But, uh, you know, when you pair it with these sort of Pokemon that deal with those threats like Araquanid and Stakataka in combination, uh, you've got that Amoongus redirection, which is a really natural partner mm -hmm. for it. Uh, these teams can really, you know, switch around and and play some really solid, consistent games. And I tend to find, uh, certainly from my experience anyway, that players that use Eveltal really well are are, are really effective uh, teams and players. Uh, but you've really got to nail uh, pretty much a lot of the turns in the game to, to get that right. So uh, hopefully Eze is going to be able to do that this match. But moving on to our next competitor, uh, we have Narowich Nani. I can't actually speak today. Nina, really I well. believe. Yeah, I'm uh, really <laughs> struggling. But I, it's probably more from excitement because one of my favorite Pokemon mm -hmm. is on that team. It is the Sableye, uh, followed up with mm. Reshiram, Incineroar, Urshifu, Sarina, and that Celesteela. Man, this is a uh, this is gonna be quite interesting. As you can see on the screen right now, we don't have any information uh, about Narrow Witch Nina, but of course, still they are now up into the next stage of the tournament. So even when there's no known right even when there's no known achievements right now for narrowish i'm pretty sure that they're going to be giving us a really good match and right now we are on the team preview yeah exactly and and it's it's good to see uh, these sort of teams match up um, some things to be careful of, obviously that Sableye, known for being a bit of a prankster, uh, like its ability, and it's going to be able to launch out things like Taunt into uh, Stack Attacker and Amoongus, stop those getting too much traction, also has the ability to Will-O-Wisp some of the threats, and that'll affect 
uh, maybe a Veltal going for foul plays and stack attacker trying to do damage. Uh, not effective on the Araquanid, of course. Um, but if Veltal, I think, has quite a strong matchup. We saw an inkling of the item there, which is that Assault Vest, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on um, Narrowich's team to get some damage off, especially when one of the main damage dealers that he has available is that Reshiram. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to play a pivotal role, especially if it has access, like most Assault Vest variants do with a Veltal, to Snarl to really slow down the game. Right, and here we have it. Narrow Edge versus Ezekiel. Let's have the champion time. They're going to be starting off with the Veltal and the Regieleki, and of course, this or Shifu and the Incinerator. Uh, Surgeon Strikes, no, not Surgeon Strikes form, but rather uh, a Rapid <laughs> Strike form of, <laughs> of your Shifu. Yeah, and that Urshifu is not going to be feeling particularly comfortable in this position in front of an Aveltal that usually carries that Oblivion Wing that's really effective against uh, mm -hmm. uh, fighting types. Uh, of course, Regilecki, no stranger to dealing damage to water types either, so a lot of pressure there and not quite enough pressure from Incineroar on Narrowich's side of the field to offer fake out support on both Pokemon you know you've got to pick which one that you fake out at the end of the day uh, to get start getting damage onto the field uh, only saving grace maybe if this uh, Urshifu is carrying a choice scarf and may be able to outspeed the uh, Urshifu uh, so the Veltal on as a side mm -hmm. of the field and right as you mentioned there goes a the fake out going into the Iraq Min, and of course Getting in the surging strike, very good read coming in from Izzy here, making sure that the Veltal is going to get a free turn this turn around. And let's take a look which one is going to take the Oblivion Wing. We both know that it is going to be the or Shifu, but it is going to still survive even after the free hit. The Rakumin. Man, I really like how it actually survived both of the attacks, of course, coming in from the Incinerator and, of course, Surging Strike. It's not a very effective move, but still, it's quite a huge, you know, I gotta give props to Rockham Nate for surviving for more than half health. Definitely, and, you know, that survival is really critical because the uh, Rakunid definitely will be able to try for uh, another attack this turn as Surging Strikes goes into the Rakunid. Uh, gonna keep doing damage, keep chipping away, and uh, maybe an indication that that Incineroar might be doubling into the Rakunid to finish it off with something like a Flare Blitz. But uh, there's the Surging Strikes finishing, and Oblivion Wing will be very likely, JJ, enough to pick up the KO on that Urshifu. Definitely. And man, just right now, we've seen the first Pokemon that actually went down, but we still have the Show Chop here going to be able to stop the Arachnid mm. from doing anything in this turn. And now it is going to be a tree for tree trade. And of course, bringing out the. Uh Bring out the Incineroar is, of course, going to bring in minus one into both of the Pokemons into the side of Narrow Witch, but it's only going to be uh, effective over the Incineroar. But we still know, of course, that there is still the Reggie Lucky at the back, still not being used for the speed control. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a fairly even trade uh, there going on. Uh, that Regi that, that Urshifu looked like a scarf on Narrow, which is certainly bit out being able to outspeed the Aveltal isn't necessarily, uh, you know, guaranteed to be a scarf, but it's a little bit of an indication uh, depending on how that Aveltal is trained. Uh, Reshiram coming in though is going to be able to start pushing pressure, putting pressure on as a side of the field and mm. um, actually maybe not this turn as it switches out for that Stellar Stealer, maybe not wanting to take any snarls or any other moves like that. Right, and of course, I think that is, uh, I have to agree with you, I think that is what uh, Narush is actually thinking, just like what is it actually thought of on turn number one. It is the same time, uh, it is what Narush is actually thinking in this turn to just bait out the opponent, and that is just what happened. Snarl going into the Celestia, and of course, the fake out as well, giving the free turn into their own incinerator. Now, parting shot is going to revive, well, not revive, but like, going to bring back basically the Reshiram into the field and I think that was a pretty good turn for Narwich. Yeah, definitely. Uh, getting Celesteela next to the Reshiram is really important because Celesteela has access to Wide Guard. A uh, Wide Guard is going to be able to block the Snarl that is going to stop Reshiram from dishing out damage. Now, 
uh, the Incineroar on Eze side of the field is pretty healthy at the moment. So that Celesteela has got to be a mm -hmm. little bit healthy. Reshiram doesn't have too many moves that can knock out an Incineroar in one. And so you've got to have this sort of uh, balance between being able to try and knock out an Incineroar mm -hmm. with something like an Earth Power that's Ooh. just come out, and of course defending the Celesteela from any damage from that Incineroar. Right, but look at the damage show. At the very least, it's a, I have to give props a lot into Incineroar for actually surviving that one. And of course, Snarl is going to, you know, uh, get in some minus into that uh, Reshiram. But the Leech Heat is, of course, going to be pro uh, parting shot now into the Reshiram, making sure that the Reshiram is going to get minus all the time, all day long. But we <laughs> still have to remember, at the very least, that there's still one more Pokemon. Excuse me. There's still one more Pokemon at the back for Narrowitch, and right now, after the minus on special attacks here, Eze finally brings out the Regi Eleki for probably the speed control in this point of the game. Yeah, that, uh, that Regi Eleki is going to be doing a lot to the Celesteela, and of course, uh, there's a little bit of a pin going on here. That Reshiram is now, as you mentioned, JJ, really uh, lowered special attack, so he isn't going to be dishing out too much damage. That's now really pivotal from the Eveltal. Uh, but of course, the uh, Narrow Witch's Pokemon in the back isn't going to be wanting to take something like a Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt from the Regileki and certainly with a little bit more snarl action going on here from the Aveltal, the Regileki is going to be able to survive some turns. Um, so this game is sort of going to be a bit, little bit more slow for the next few turns, but I think Eze is in a, quite a good situation overall. Right, but look at the switch here coming in from Eze, going to have the Volt Switch once again, going into Reshiram, of course, just wants to make sure that uh, Eze would be able to lower down the Reshiram as much as possible that, uh, uh, you know, they could get over this Reshiram, as I think this is a pretty huge threat right now into the side of Eze, and as you can see, that is what they're doing right now, you know, trying to focus everything into that of the Reshiram, but that is quite a very good switch as well, of course, Earth Power is not going to hit a flying type Pokemon, but at the same time, we still have Celesteela here, very, very bulky, and getting that Leech Seed is just not going to help Ezzy at all. Like, yes, you could focus all your, uh, um, you know, your debuffs over the Reshiram, but there's still the Celesteela and the Incineroar at the back. Yeah, exactly. And that was a really clever play there from uh, Narrowitch, actually. Uh, the uh, Eveltal switched out and the Volt Switch came out to get the Eveltal back in, so made sure it was on the field without that Leech Seed issue causing any more damage to it. But Narrowitch saw through that and got that Leech Seed on the Incineroar, so really good play there. But rush around this turn, uh, mm -hmm. coming out off of the field, resetting those special attack drops, which is going to be very important. Uh, that is really the key to Narrowitch's game, to get that rush around doing as much damage mm -hmm. as possible and bringing that Incin Incineroar onto the field to take that Snarl from Eveltal. Right, and that switch once again coming from Naris just essentially resets all the debuffs over the Reshiram, and this is where I think where Enzi is is really really just uh, having a hard time. You know, like earlier as I mentioned, everything is uh, basically focused into the Reshiram, but it seems as if Enzi is forgetting that Naris still has other pokemons in the field that they need to take i mean i i, I mean I, at the very least right i, I do uh, understand as well and i do respect you know the focus uh, of attacks into the restroom but there's still the other pokemons that may still deal damage uh, against izzy here but it's just it's just a time thing really in this game uh, that's that's going to be the real kicker for as a to be aware of because you're absolutely right there's a lot of focus on everything that's not the uh, not the Reshiram, oh, sorry, Reshiram is the main focus, should I say, mm -mm -mm. Uh, but it's the one that's going to be uh, doing the immediate damage. The trouble is, is if you ignore that right. Celesteela and the Leech Seed too long, uh, you can fall prey to other moves that will, especially from the Reshiram, that will bring everything into mm -hmm. KO range. And that Regilecki right. isn't doing too much to that Reshiram either, so uh, got to be a bit careful with how you play that, but uh, careful is definitely what's happening here with a Volt Switch bringing it out of danger and doing quite a good uh, little bit of damage to that Incineroar on Narrowitch's side of the field. 
Now, both of these players, quite interestingly, uh, both, of the, uh, both of these teams, though, having quite a different uh, set of Pokemon, set of tree Pokemons right now, is still essentially doing the same things, just trying to switch out, you know, the other Pokemon and trying to basically prolong this match just to make sure that their core Pokemon, of course, in the side of Narovich is going to be the uh, Reshiram, and of course, for Ezra, it's going to be the Veltal, is going to last than the other, and then they will be able to proc in some damage. But at this mm. point... We're gonna be, uh, I think, we're gonna be seeing the end of the timer. Well, we could be, certainly, and, and this... If this Celesteela doesn't leave the field uh, quite soon, uh, I definitely think you're right there, JJ. The timer is gonna be where this game is decided, especially with all of the snarl pressure and such. And uh, it's, it seems a bit strange to me. Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, what Eze's uh, thinking exactly, um, what his game plan is, mm -hmm. because this uh, Celesteela as they have the tools to knock it out with both Incineroar and with the uh, Celesteela, but he's quite content mm -hmm. uh, to launch Fake Out into that Reshiram, uh, launch an Oblivion Wing, get a little bit of health back, uh, which is going to be going to that Celesteela um, with the uh, right. Deep Seed Recovery, um, uh, and just try to chip this uh, Reshiram by the looks of things into range of uh, a kill very mm -hmm. soon. Right, and you can see the damage as well uh, of the Oblivion Wing into that of the uh, Reshiram. It isn't that much, and of course, as we mentioned, it is quite a threat as well. Uh, well, sorry, let me retract myself. It's not even the Reshiram that's being the threat right now. It is the Celestia, and even if Enzi is just going to switch out, of course, the Celestia is just going to snap in some damage still with the uh, uh, Leech Seed here. Uh, Leech Seed here, and, and, and like, Reshiram doesn't even have to do anything but i do like the i do like the decision coming from izzy here of course just trying to be aggressive going for the uh going in for the oblivion wing just to be you know trying to predict that incinerator is coming out from the side of the uh restroom and maybe even take out the incinerator at that point but quite unfortunately nara witch was able to see that from a mile away and right now we're going to be able to see the earth power still not going to be enough though to take out the incinerator from the side of izzy and of course the foul play mm -hmm. go Going into Reshiram, going to deal a lot of damage. That is what we want to see right now. Huge damage, but of course, the Flare Blitz is not going to do a lot of damage. It's not a very effective move against Incineroar, and it is also not enough to take out itself from the recoil damage. So I'd have to say this is still a pretty good turn for Izzy, but there's still the fake out as well. So this might be the last. Oh, never mind. I forgot about the Leech Seed. Yeah. I forgot about the Leech Seed, and that's going to be the last turn for the Incineroar. <laughs> it is, and I. A lot of these games where players are switching around and switching around and switching around uh, tend to end quite sharply when the, the last Pokemon or one Pokemon of three gets knocked out because, hey, there's no more options left anymore. Uh, but really crucial turn for actually both players. If Elton manages to get some really strong damage off onto Reshiram, that puts Reshiram in range of uh, most of the attacks on the field may be even Regilecki at a push. Uh, Incineroar goes down on Eze's side of the field, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of backwards mm -hmm. and forwards here, um, and it's going to be down to uh, Narrowich to correctly Ooh. predict, as he has, uh, which Pokemon is going to be protecting, which Pokemon's not. Uh, Fake Out goes into the Eveltal, no moving there. Incineroar gets just that little bit more healthy here uh, as Regilecki blocks that Earth Power with a Protect, and uh, now it's down to Narrowich to decide on how he's going to dispatch that Regilecki before it really threatens that Celesteela. Mm -hmm. Right, and if if Narrowich is not going to be able to, you know, basically defeat, uh, knock out this Regilecki, and I have to agree with you that it is going to be quite a threat against the, uh, you know, the Celesteela, but we have to consider as well that Incineroar and Reshiram is still in the side of the field coming in into uh, Narrowridge, but that mm. Soccer Punch is definitely something that Narrowridge, I don't believe, uh, would have been able to see at it, at, as it was a Soccer Punch. But right now, look at that Thunderbolt over the Incineroar. It's still not going to be enough though, but just that is what Izzy actually needs. Now, at this point on, Daisy was able to turn the tables around against Narrowish. Narrowish was already winning, already had advantage uh, when they had the uh, when they had the advantage uh, when they had the Celesteela and the Reshiram yeah. up the field. But right now, without the Reshiram, without that pressure, and it's just going to be 
Uh, Ez, is, uh, Ez is on the advantage right now, despite having the health disadvantage. Well, I, I think it's a little bit a little bit more difficult as Narrowitch does have a little bit too much health within mm -hmm. Cyril. That Leech Seed came in so clutch. Eveltal having so much health allows Incineroar to recover more and more. Uh, we saw the damage from the Thunderbolt come out from that Regilecki into Incineroar. That Leech Seed hadn't been there. I mean, the Incineroar would have probably get got knocked out, right. but you know, if that last turn of Leech Seed wasn't there, the Thunderbolt would have definitely knocked out the Incineroar this turn. Uh, and so, you know, it wouldn't be a, as quite so crucial, but here it is, the Sucker Punch going into Incineroar, followed up by the Thunderbolt on from Regilecki. It is going to be up enough to pick up the knockout, but if this Celesteela is able to knock out this Regilecki with a Heavy Slam, which likely to do so, mm. and it does, uh, yeah, that Celesteela is going to be having a great time against the Veltro. Right. Uh, some good information, <laughs> though, coming out from... Uh, for as a that that uh, Celesteela is trying to boost its special defense mm -hmm. uh, when it gets its beast boost, so gonna be have to be careful of that going into the next game because if Narrowitch is able to get that special defense boost, it means that Regilecki is a lot less effective and a lot more uh, a lot less threatening for Narrowitch's side of the field. So yeah, gonna be ending this game with a heavy slam, and that's game one to Narrowitch. Mm -hmm. Right. It was actually quite, uh, as you mentioned, in, in your words, right, it's quite a huge back and forth games uh, with Izzy and, you know, Narwich. And I think that is going to give them both quite huge information about each other and how they're going to be dealing into, how they're going to be adjusting into game number two. So if, if you were on the side of the players, say you were Narwich, what do you, what do you think should you have, sorry, AZ, what do you think should you have done on uh, the mid match, basically the mid uh, the mid game, uh, for you to be able to get advantage over uh, Narrowich's uh, Celestila and Reshiram? Well, looking back at that game, there was always the opportunity for Celestila to go back into Incineroar or into mm -hmm. uh, Reshiram, both of which mm -hmm. uh, Reshiram survives or it, it's not take, doesn't take too much damage from either electrical fire attacks. Um, but that Celesteela was on the field for four, maybe five right. turns, just getting those leech seeds off and uh, doing a bit. So if I was if I was Eze uh, looking at this game, I'd be thinking about how I could maybe knock the Celesteela out a little bit quicker, uh, maybe get into a position mm -hmm. where I'm pinning uh, Narowich's team a little bit more effectively, um, and mm -hmm. just trying to uh, attack a little bit a little bit earlier on in the game. Of course, one of the things that's going to be uh, really crucial for that is that uh, Araquanid, which went down early for Eze, um, mm -hmm. as did that Water Urshifu, or Rapid Strike Urshifu, should I say. And All right. because of that, these these Water-type Pokemon are so important for knocking out things like Incineroar, which did a lot of pivoting, a lot of fake-outing, uh, put a lot of pressure on. Even more crucial, that Narrowitch is probably, uh, probably likes to see the Araquanid less than as a likes to see the uh, rapid strike Urshifu because if Eltul can deal with Urshifu, whereas a Raquinid, uh, sorry, Reshiram can't really deal with a Raquinid too well. So, yeah, I like that switch up here from as a bringing that early game. Right, and here we have it. We're going to see some protect here from the Velto, I'm uh, sorry, from the Araquinid, but that is uh, mostly going to be quite a free turn for both of the. Both of the Sorry, for Narrowitch, rather, uh, of course, it is going to be dealt a little bit of damage over the Eveltal, of course, with the help of the uh, Fake Out into Narrowitch's Incineroar. But let's see if we're going to be seeing some damage in this game. I'd like to see the Arachnid uh, definitely to last more in this game, as we didn't really see the Arachnid in action, except for taking, you know, a, a hit. It taking hits basically from the uh, rapid strike uh, or shifu just to be able to deal sorry just to be able to uh, you know last long in the game but right now we are going to be seeing some attack here <laughs> going to our on it that is actually quite good as well we are seeing uh quite a huge damage into the rack now throw chop is i think not gonna be enough though to get that one up but of course liquidation is going to be the play of the game here for is it but still not gonna be enough not even half health damage into the reshram so at this point on a recommend yes might have been able to deal some damage into reshram but at this point i think a recommend uh, job 
is more or less done. I don't, I don't think Arachnid is going to be able to last long unless, of course, Arachnid is going to be uh, switched out and, you know, basically uh, have it for the last game. But as we can see, uh, as we can see with the speed, it's not going to be able to attack first uh, than the Pokemon for Nanowitch, especially with the, uh, the Incineroar and, of course, the uh, Rusher M. No, certainly not. And Serena coming in here is a good play for Narrowitch. It's a, a nice adjustment from game one to stop all of those uh, pesky fake outs from coming out, making sure that Incineroar are, is going to be able to launch a throat chop into uh, what was the Araquanid is now the Eveltal. Uh, unfortunately, though, for Narrowitch, the Serena has to take a flare blitz for its troubles. A lot of recoil coming mm -hmm. out on the Incineroar and Serena eating a probably citrus berry, I would say. Um, looking at that health recovery to uh, restore some restore it back to nearly full HP, but you're absolutely right about the uh, Araquanid. It's uh, it it did some work. I certainly put the Reshiram into range for more damage mm -hmm. uh, later in the game. Uh, but that Serena coming in kind of implies that the Urshifu didn't arrive uh, on uh, Narrowitch's mm -hmm. team game and that could work uh, quite well in Eze's favor uh, given that that Eveltal with Oblivion Wing is going to be able to just uh, launch an attack into there and mm -hmm. not really worry too much about that Incineroar even whether whether it's on the field or not uh, and going to get some HP recovery as well for its troubles. Right, but with that Oblivion Wing, of course, I think it's going to be able to knock out the Serena and of course, Quinley, Majesty the Queen is now out of the field. Therefore, is is now going to be able to get that fake out pressure into Narrowitch's side. And of course, going in with a parting shot into that of the Celestila is going to just bring out, you know, the other Pokemon uh, into the field. Probably the Araquanid. Uh, let's find out. Or never mind, it is going to be the Regieleki. <laughs> Yeah, Regilecki's a really great switch in here for the Celesteela that's just come onto the field. And uh, going back to what we were talking about, about what to do if you're as a uh, coming mm -hmm. into this match is uh, twofold. One, find a way to deal with that Celesteela, and Regilecki is definitely one of those ways. Of course, the other one is to, uh, I guess, be able to have more Pokemon on your side of the field to be able to switch around. Uh, that gives you a lot more options. Maybe you bring the Araquanid in to uh, take an attack that you don't want to uh, take from your other three members of the team uh, so that you can regain a position, maybe like a pseudo protect in some way uh, in certain positions. Right. And so where where now Eze has the four Pokemon to three advantage, that's mm -hmm. gonna play dividends in the long run. Uh, to this and of course Incineroar coming onto the field will be able to offer some fake out pressure of its own uh, we might see some leech seeds this turn but <laughs> mm -hmm. going back again uh, how to gang up on the Celesteela uh, this is definitely it Incineroar and Regilecki two Pokemon that Celesteela does not like mm -hmm. to be in front of Right, and of course, with that, Intimidate is going to bring down minus one into the attack coming in into the Incinerator. But of course, the Elite Sheet is all enough for Celesteela to actually last this round, even with the minus one. But as you mentioned, that fake out going into the Retro Leke is not going to let it do a lot of damage. Well, not do damage at all against the Celesteela. And right now, I think Celesteela is going to go out of the field and maybe get uh, maybe double switch in. Uh, actually, uh, coming in uh, another parting shot from the, the Incineroar as well uh, into Narrowitch. But right now, let's find out what's going to be into that off the next turn. What do you think is uh, what do you think is going to be the play here for Narrowitch? Well, it, it, it's, it's difficult. I think the uh, Celesteela does want to. Um play defensively certainly as it does uh, but you want to find a way to get Reshiram maybe onto the um, field safely uh, that could be like protect and parting shot um, but now we see the protect coming out from the Celesteela fake out into the ins uh, between the Incineroars obviously in Eze's favor a little bit more leech seed damage but now we're in a situation where that Celesteela has already protected um, so it's gonna have to do something it's going to have to either switch into the Reshiram in the back for uh, Narrowitch, or mm -hmm. Narrowitch is going to have to make that prediction that Eze is not going to target down into it. Um, it may be, I think, what what Eze could be doing here is just 
attacking into the Reshiram slot, doing a bunch of damage and maybe leaving that Reshiram in range for uh, another attack in a, in a moment. But no, uh, mm -hmm. Regilecki just leaving the field this turn with a Volt Switch. Right, and of course, we now see once again the Reshiram from Narich. I'd have to say one of the uh, MVPs of the game. Well, not one of the MVPs, but actually the MVP of the game on game number one. Now back into the field, but we also have the Eveltal, of course. Parking shot going into the Incineroar, and just that's just going to repeat the process I mentioned. You know, double switch out is going to be the play of the game here for Narrowitch. And it's just going to be this basically what happened in game number one is going to get repeated once again. Yeah, and it's really difficult when you're trying to pin down a Pokemon in this sort of uh, really defensive core that actually has a lot of answers for all of your switch ins. But uh, mm -hmm. those answers are being removed one by one. Uh, Leech Seed recovery for Reshiram is. Uh, gonna be quite important for it to just get a little bit of health back but if we think back to the previous game that Eveltal with its foul play not affected by Intimidate switches, uh, switch ins is gonna be able to pick up the knockout on the rush around this turn and uh, as we've just seen the input there as they wants to stop that Leech Seed recovery by switching into his Araquanid and that's gonna be quite important uh, because Eze can't really do, uh, sorry, Narrowitch can't really do too much about stopping the uh, Leech Seed recovery other than trying to now get it set up on something else. Uh, but this Incineroar mm -hmm. switching in yet again for Narrowitch and keeping the uh, momentum rolling round. Right, but we're going to be seeing here uh, switch in into the Araquanid. Of course, foul play is going to be the play here into that of the Feltal. Not going to do a lot of damage here into the Incineroar, but of course, Lich Seed is going to be the play of the game here for a narrow edge. And of course, this is just going to be a repeat of the process, uh, just like what happened earlier. And, you know, there's going to be another switch in. And that's just, again, I'd like, I'd have to agree with you that this game, what they're doing right now is just, hey, this is just a hide and seek, basically. Um, <laughs> so someone, someone's trying to pin in uh, the other Pokemon, and someone's just going to switch out, and get switched in once again, and until they are going to be able to pin down, you know, the Pokemon uh, off each other, of course, only then would we see the imbalance over this equilibrium that we are seeing right now from Izzy and Narrowitch. Yeah, definitely. And Cineral coming in again for as a. Um, you know, all of the intimidates and all of the all of those sort of uh, stat debuffs are really not going going to make too much difference in this match. Uh, these Pokemon aren't really going to be attacking; they're just going to be switching around and letting Leech Seed uh, from Narrowitch's side do the business, so to speak. But we'll have to see if uh, Narrowitch correctly predicted the switch in there and reset the Leech Seed on that side of the field uh, onto Incineroar because. You know, really, for Eze, if he's able to break that Leech Seed pattern that's been uh, brought on and on, turn by turn, from that Celesteela, uh, then it may be that he can do something uh, a little bit more significant. But Heavy Slam going into the Araquanid Protect is quite good for uh, Eze's side of the field. Uh, does break that Leech Seed. Um, it, possible that the Heavy Slam is going to be able to get that special defense boost, which would... Uh, stop Regilecki from being so much of a threat and uh, allow uh, the Reshiram and Celesteela to stay on the field a little bit longer and dish out a little bit of damage. Um, but, you know, it does does kind of look like if the Incineroar and uh, Regilecki on Eze's side of the field go down, uh, this Celesteela is looking really, really nice against the rest of Eze's team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we are going to be able to see a switch in here into the Regilecki like, and of course a fake out into that of the rush Ram. But that is going to give a free turn into Narrow, which goes in for the Heavy Slam into the Regilecki. Like, not going to do a lot of damage here, uh, of course, with the help of the minus one coming in from that of the Incineroar. But this is this is another another uh this is this is what's going to happen again. We're going yeah, to be it's... seeing a hide and seek from both of these players <laughs> once again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but this is a different situation to the last time, right? And so the Reshiram being on the field next to Celesteela mm -hmm. 
while Incineroar and Regilecki are on the field is a different condition mm. because Incineroar right. can't switch in so well into electric and fire as Reshiram mm -hmm. can. And so, like, you know, same as last game, at the point where you break that free Pokemon core, which has been working so well, at the point you can do that, then you have a little bit of a game. And uh, as a still scared of that Reshiram, is going to be having the Eveltal come in and a Volt Switch coming out from that Regilecki and Regilecki leaving the field once again. No protect from Celesteela and no damage onto Celesteela. Hmm. I wonder who's going to be the one. A CK right now, oh. but a blue flare is going to get missed. Is going to be avoided by the Arachnid. I think if that hit, uh, Arachnid is going to be out of the uh, chain here, and you know Izzy is going to have less of an option for the switch outs. But as things are, it looks like it's pretty lucky to avoid that blue flare from the Reshiram. Yeah, it's, it's nice, but it almost would have been nicer for Eze if that Raquanid had have gone mm -hmm. down. Uh, you'd get that positive momentum switch where the Regilecki could come back into the field and frame right. down that Celesteela. And that Reshiram, which is looking, you know, lower and lower, uh, certainly with a little bit more Volt Switch damage and, and all of that. Because, uh, you know, if the Reshiram goes down to low enough health, then a Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt could knock it out. And the, the Celesteela, because of all of the Incineral switches in, has, is on such a low stage of attack at the minute and only probably has mm -hmm. access to Heavy Slam, which is not very effective mm -hmm. against Regilecki. That, yeah, Regilecki could end up in a position where it could actually just sit on the field and launch out Thunderbolts to its heart's content. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, little bit, a little bit unfortunate, I think, for Eze, but, you know, we'll see how that goes as Incineral switches in yet again. Right, and here we have a Shadow Ball going into the Veltal, not going to deal a lot of damage Ooh. as it is a not very effective hit. But Foul Play, I think, is going to be enough to take down the Reshiram. And just right there, is it now has the upper advantage. But I do have to agree with you with what you said. Thank you for reminding me that it is quite, uh, you know, the uh, Arachnid not going down is more of damaging, sorry, into the side of Aze just because of the fact that, as you mentioned, there were. You know, Arachnid needs to be switched out, right? And not getting KO'd means AZ is not going to have any free uh, free switch-ins. But right now, it doesn't matter. AZ just took down the uh, the Reshiram, and now Narich is down to the Incineroar and the Celesteela, still having four Pokemons for their side. Yeah, and uh, now it becomes a... a very different dynamic and uh, narrow which now is no longer able to switch and so you know there's this how do i position myself so i can deal with if i'm as a deal with the incineral on narrow side of the field and it looks like uh, yeah Narrowich knows that without free Pokemon on his side of the field, he mm -hmm. doesn't have too many options left, and uh, there's the forfeit. So, yeah, interesting game, actually. Um, these these kind of long positional games, they they look like nothing's happening, but you kind mm -hmm. of those all those little there's a bits lot. of there's damage. A lot. There, there's a lot. Yeah, exactly. Like, all of those little bits of damage, that Leech Seed recovery, uh, mm -hmm. when a Pokemon protects, when it doesn't, do you get the Volt? switch Do you not? Absolutely, if you get the right switch-ins, uh, you know, Earth Power coming out from a Reshiram into an Incineroar switch-in wouldn't be very nice. And yeah, so, you know, lots going on there. But going back to the drawing board, I mean, uh, really, we're not in a, a particularly different situation to uh, the previous game, with the exception that Serena wasn't a very good pick. It didn't seem for Narowich to bring. Probably going to mm -hmm. be reconsidering that uh that option um but the trouble is is you know do you bring you do you bring the sarina or the urshifu which are both weak to that of Eltul, or do you start to bring the sableye which isn't able to use its prankster moves against incineroar or of Eltul, and so could be just sitting there on the field doing pretty much nothing um uh, against the team um it, that we've we've already seen the reshiram celesteela incineroar core has such a great team uh, composition that that team of three is so good at dealing mm -hmm. with what Eze has to bring 
But that last Pokemon seems to be a liability. The trouble is, is that that liability is the number of Pokemon that you have left. And when you've got that one more Pokemon, you just get that. You only need one time where that option matters. Uh, and Eze can take advantage of that, which is kind of what happened in the last game. So, yeah, a little bit of adjustment to to think mm -hmm. about from Narrowage. But, yeah, I think... I think likelihood is that we're going to see a, another tight game going into game three. Right, and of course, with the change of the team composition here, coming here from Eze, we are definitely going to be seeing a different kind of game. Maybe no longer the switch outs, uh, you know, strategy for Eze, but if this is it. This is game number three. We have Narich starting off with the uh, Reshiram and the Incineroar once again, just like in game number two. And for the side of Aze, it's going to be the Eveltel and the Incineroar. Let's have a champion time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Eveltel. Uh, I'd like to see. I'd like to see a slightly different uh, game actually from Eze here, where uh, maybe we saw that the fake out interactions looks like it favors Eze side of the field quite like to see just an early foul play into that pressure ram uh, to knock it down to sort of half HP um, from as a side of the field I do think if like if you're looking at the uh, team compositions ah it's the narrow which is incineral that managed to go first uh, mm -hmm. and getting that earth power onto the incineral is huge uh, because that's going to stop all of these all of these sort of interactions where Pokemon can switch if there's just that bit of damage on there. Uh, but only a Snarl coming out from Eze's Eveltal, uh, just trying to slow down the pace of the game a little bit. But I think that turn was definitely in Narrowich's favor. Right. I have to agree with you there, but... Hmm. This is uh this is where we're going to see how Eze's game is going to be uh, going to differ uh, from the previous two games. You know this is uh, the, this is the adjustment that Eze found. You know as the answer against Narrowich, uh, we are going to be seeing some redirection here. We have the Amungus into the back uh, of Eze. Maybe uh, maybe Eze thought that okay uh, the Raconid may not last that long if we're going to do some switch-ins here so definitely we have the among us here of course with the regenerator ability is going to heal itself up you know when switched out so that is going to be quite an advantage on the strategy uh for izzy here but we're going to be seeing some switch in here of course incinerator going out now now with the among us but Reshiram I'm going in for the Shadow Ball into that of the Veltal. Still not going to do a lot here. Not even more so this time with that minus uh, into the special attack into the Reshiram. And now going to double it up from earlier. And still not going to do a lot of damage here. But I think uh, Izzy is trying to focus up into Reshiram once again. Just like what happened in game number one. And I don't. I'm not going to say. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's a bad strategy. I'm saying that, again, just like what happened in game number one, there are other Pokemon's uh, that is being a threat right now for Izzy. Mm, certainly, and uh, you know, Amoongus is an interesting switch up there for for Eze. Like, it can redirect Celesteela's Leech Seeds into it, which would obviously fail mm -hmm. being a Grass type. Right. That's quite effective. Uh, but you've got to do that in front of an Incineroar and a Reshiram. So I uh, kind of understand the Snarl plays here, making sure that Reshiram's blue flare is unlikely to knock out the Ayo. Amoongus in one, and then you can redirect mm -hmm. some uh, some moves. And of course, with a bit of redirection comes the ability to uh, just keep dishing out some damage. Uh, Reshiram mm -hmm. doesn't want to take any of that, wants to so reset the... Uh, stat drops that it got already switching in incineral getting that intimidate onto the field are uh, not going to be that crucial uh, to the state of the game uh, as as a thinks exactly the same uh, the question is is what is that amoongus going for if it's going for the spore that could be really really pivotal in this match right but as we can see here it is going to be the pollen puff here into the incinerator <laughs> going to heal its ally and to look at that hp recovery right now into the incinerator making sure that they have the sustain uh that they could uh they could have a sustain to last this game and of course we are definitely going to see uh more of this 
if Narish won't be able to take out the Among Us. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, even if Among Us is going to get uh, damage here, getting it, you know, getting it out, getting it switched out, is just going to recover its health thanks to its ability. If <laughs> right with the regenerator, and now going in for the spore. Uh, just trying to uh, negate basically this Celestila, but Narich saw that from a mile away going in for a protect here But a parting shot right now from Narich is going to hit the incinerator and of course going to have a switch in once again Yeah, and uh, you know nice protect uh, Making sure that the Celestila wasn't going to sleep because you want that to carry on being being leech seeded and Getting that Reshiram into the field uh, I didn't actually see which slot the Amoongus targeted, so uh, really going to be important uh, as to whether that Reshiram goes to sleep, because if it does, it doesn't, but if it does, uh, you know, Narrowitch has got a really uphill battle with his main damage dealer uh, going to be lost, and uh, now comes the time for Eze to just carry on repositioning. Uh, the mm -hmm. um, Reshiram coming in for Narrowitch is in a really good spot, to be able to deal some damage, especially with that Eveltal off the field. No more Snarls coming out, not at the moment anyway. Um, so, you know, it's going to be really difficult for Eze to stop taking uh, too much damage on this turn. Right, but look at that. Eze was able to see that true. Guess in the protect, Ooh. not going, going to get hit from any of the attacks coming from Narish, and now goes in for the uh, goes in for that a parting shot just to you know reduce the special attack here going into that of uh, the uh, Russia. Of course, as you mentioned earlier, just trying to secure uh, the Russia. I'm not to not to be able to you know not to be able to take down this among us and at this point i think it's working out pretty well for is it now switching out into this uh wretched lucky trying to take out this celestila never mind it is going to be uh, wanting to take out the restaurant instead and uh now we're probably going to see the okay we are definitely going to see the beltel uh once again into the side of is but the question is is it the right play well, indeed, Eveltal coming in, uh, going to definitely be able to take a blue flare, especially with a reduced stage of special attack mm -hmm. on the Reshiram. Uh, Volt Switch coming out there, probably the... Pro it's definitely it's definitely a play. Uh, there was definitely an mm -hmm. opportunity there to play a little bit more aggressively into the Celesteela. Uh, maybe play Thunderbolt and Spore into the Reshiram because uh, you have to, in order for the... Uh, Regilecki to be threatened, the Russian mm -hmm. round would have had to not be targeting the Amoongus and therefore you get a spore off. Um, so, you know, a few mind games there, I think. Uh, but Narrowitch reading mm. into that very well, launching out at Earth Power into the Incineroar on the switch in. Uh, looks like a heavy slam to follow that up. So, uh, not, not too much, but just that little bit more damage and uh, maybe putting the Incineroar over the edge for uh, maybe a couple of turns later where. Yeah, the Reshiram isn't actually at a reduced stage of special attack and can pick up the knockout. Uh, mm -hmm. So could be important in a few more turns. Right, and here we have it. The Incinerator is once again back into the field for the side of Narrowitch. And of course, the Civil is going to get uh, activated as we have been seeing earlier. You know, minus one into both of the Pokemon from the opposing, uh, opposing side. And we're going to be seeing a switch in here into the side of AZ. Goes in for the Among Us. And now Fall Play is going in into that of the Restaurant, but of course, now replaced by the Incinerator. But Leech Sheet is going to be a free turn here a free hit sorry a, fr a free attack basically for Celestila for this turn yeah exactly and um, you know the uh, leech seed coming out onto a Veltal is pretty pivotal um, as it has been over the last few games we don't see too many ways on Eze's side of the field to stop that barring you know just launching big attacks into the Celestila uh, which haven't either haven't uh, Eze hasn't had the opportunity to do or hasn't taken the opportunities to, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. various positions where the Celesteela hasn't protected. I do like the way that Narrowitch is playing that. To be fair to, uh, to be fair to, he's he's playing a, a very experienced game with his Celesteela and understanding how to use it as a proper win mm -hmm. condition. I'm gonna have to be worried a little bit about Spore coming out. Uh, definitely the right switch in there, bringing in Cinerorian for Eze. I uh, could be able to survive a Flare Blitz 
and heat wave uh, heavy slam combination uh, so we see the heat wave mm. coming in here uh doing just over half which is uh, pretty terrible damage to be uh, doing to an Amoongus if you're an Incineroar. Uh, and that Amoongus is probably going to be able to get a little Spore uh, action going onto the field. And I think that's going to really change the dynamic of the... Oh, no. Pollen Puff. Right. Uh, everyone's, everyone's regenerating. <laughs> this is... Nobody, nobody right? wants to get knocked out. Everyone wants to regenerate. It's, rege it's, it, it's a healing right. party for all. Uh, right? Yeah. This, is, this is what I'm telling you. This is, this is what I'm telling everyone else as well. Like, Among Us is not, of course, has the ability to regenerate. It's going to be able to heal itself up, but now it's all, uh, already also used the uh, Citrus Berry. But at the same time, there is still the uh, redirection pressure coming in from the Among Us, but also has the sustain from the Among Us, of course, uh, that comes into the form of the Pollen Puff, even if you're going to be able to, uh, you know, get a lot of damage into the side of AZ. If Among Us is still up there, then I think you're going to have a hard time in taking out AZ's Pokemon in this game. And I think that, I, I think, and I really think that that is quite a nice play from AZ here. And of course, we might be able to see uh, a parting shot here into the rush I'm never mind it is going to be a switch out uh, from the Among Us into the Eveltal and if that was a play right if that was a, a prediction here coming from AZ then definitely that uh, Among Us would have been able to survive a lot of hits uh, coming in from the rush round. But right now, Fake Out is going to be the play of the game here into that of the rush round. Going to deal a little bit of damage here, of course, with the help of the critical hit, is going to be quite a lot. But at the same time, we have the Lich Hit here uh, dealing, uh, chipping in some damage into that of the Incinerator. Yeah, and uh, that fake out, that's the second time that fake out has crit into the Reshiram. Um, actually, like, it's quite significant damage to be doing to that Reshiram, given the amount of damage that is getting taken every turn um, and obviously recovered as well. But Reshiram leaving the field, uh, probably a good uh, thing for Narrowitch to do. And we do see that Urshifu has come back to the game, so it's going to be able to take a foul play fairly well. Mm -hmm. Uh, not do too much damage and of course lychee coming out from celesteela is going to be chipping away as it has been uh, over the last few games passing shot though coming into urshifu is not going to matter in the slightest uh to urshifu because it's just going to be locking into uh those water moves if it wants to uh, stay on the field and attack but with that amoongus coming in for eze it's probably not going to stick around for too long because that amoongus is got to a point where it's hit the field under absolutely no pressure whatsoever mm -hmm. and so right uh, you know it, it doesn't have a, a pokemon to heal up now um necessarily it could decide to just pollen puff knowing that evelto is going to take a bit of damage um that's quite important but uh you know it's it, i still think there's just so so much of an opportunity to hit the spore button onto narrow side of the field <laughs> and just stop him protecting uh, mm -hmm. you know and, and the more pokemon that are asleep the the more opportunities that you have to get that regilecki in and just uh hit some attack buttons uh but right. not happening in sidoral coming in for celestina right and not only that right uh spore hitting any of the pokemon from narrow is basically going to end this cycle uh from narrow even after the switch house, if the Pokemon is asleep, Aze is just going to be able to just, you know, proc in a lot of damage and be on the offensive side. But that is not going to be what's going to happen. Uh, that's not what's going to happen in this uh, game right now as Aze, Aze does not opt in for that. But now we're going to see the Oblivion Wing here, I think, is going into the side of the Reshiram. Of course, it is going to be the side of the Reshiram. And, of course, it's just going to heal itself up quite a bit, of course, even with the Pollen Puff now is going to recover <laughs> back into its full health now this is uh well this is not now but like since earlier you can see how much of a threat right now how much of the mvp of the game is among us right now uh, into the side of izzy and if narish is not going to be able to take down this among us i think uh, there's no, uh, you know, uh, Narish is not going to be able to do anything into the side of it. Again, even if there's some damage, Pollen Puff away heals himself up. 
Mm, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Fake Out coming out into the Avelto, uh, nice safe play there with the ability for Rusharam to go for a blue flare, but really nice targeting there, mm -hmm. uh, just completely ignoring uh, that Amoongus on Eze's mm -hmm. side of the field and getting damage onto Avelto, uh, completely negating the, the healing that happened from that Oblivion Wing and right. Colin Puff in the last turn. I really like that uh, as a route for narrow which is sometimes sometimes you've got to stop switching uh dig your heels in and put some damage onto the field and uh, that's what Eze's game plan has been to avoid right the pollen puff has been mm -hmm. stopping all that happening uh, but there's only so long that that can happen and only so much um, uh you know pressure that the amoongus can take before it has to do something defensive like protect um and allow narrow witch to get that damage off and it's really about how narrow which is able to capitalize on those just those moments there uh, as he did in that turn uh, to put himself a little bit forward in, in a position where he can uh, really take a, a stronger footing in the game right but speaking of stronger footing it looks like is is tr wanting to go in for a quick crowd here with the side <laughs> with the switch in of the reggie Eleki. and of course incinerator is now out once again of course causing the intimidate minus one and at this point does it really matter <laughs> at this point but yes i think mm. it is going to matter as it's not going to knock out the reggie Eleki thanks to that minus one uh into that of the incinerator and i think you know even without the minus Minus one, I think Reggie Lecky is still going to be able to survive that one, but at least not going to deal this less of a damage without that minus one. So it's going to be putting Reggie Lecky in quite a dangerous uh, position if it wasn't for the Intimidate. But right now, Izzy still has some sustains here, has some, you know, uh, some, some way to sustain uh, their Pokemon. But we are looking uh, into the climax of the game right now, I believe, especially with the help of that, uh, you know, lead sheet into, uh, sorry, Celestila pressure into the side of Izzy. Ooh, that's a big critical hit. Man, mm -hmm. getting that knockout on the Incineroar is absolutely huge here. Uh, Reggie Lecky leaving the field as well. Uh, yeah, now Amoongus can just drop in um, pretty much unscathed. Um, mm -hmm. The great thing about Eze's team choice here is that uh, Amoongus is only threatened by the Reshiram now. Everything else, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, maybe it'll do some damage, uh, but not very quickly, and it can be all be redirected, right? So now right. that that Incineroar's off the field, uh, on Narrowich's side, man, it, you know, Eze's got a real advantage here. Right, but even then, right, even if we're talking about, like, uh, and I have to agree with you, right, that Reshram is the only threat right now for the Among Us, but still, we have to, uh, we have to take note as well that, you know, Incinerar still has a parting shot here, Among Us could just, you know, sustain uh, the Pokemon into the side of AZ, so at this point, I think if AZ plays this right, then I don't think Reshram is going to be that of any threats into their side, but the only threat that is, uh, that's being Try right now into Izzy's side. I, I'd have to say is going to be the Celestia instead of the Reshiram. As one more hit, I believe, is uh, one more hit from Izzy into that of the Reshiram is going to take that one out. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And uh, Urshifu coming back in, um, you know, it's going to be putting on some in, uh, pressure to the Incineroar. Uh, it does block protects and things like that. Not that we've seen too many this uh, game from Eze's side of the field and. Uh, mm. Yeah, Amoongus correctly protecting there is going to be quite vital as parting shot. It's going to bring that Reshiram uh, down again to one uh, stage of decreased special attack, and uh, that's going to mean that the Eveltal may not get knocked out uh, by the by any of the attacks from uh, Reshiram mm -hmm. this turn. But to be fair, with the Amoongus on the field, uh, I don't see any way that uh, you know, Eze is not going to just go for something like uh, Follow Me and Oblivion Wing, maybe into the Urshifu. Could be launching a foul play into the Reshiram. Uh, both would probably pick up knockouts from the ranges that we have in front oh, of us. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, the Rage Bounder going off. Mm -hmm. uh, Sucker Punch going out onto the Reshiram. Mm. Easily going to be able to pick up the knockout there. Uh, that's any threat to Amoongus off the field now. Uh, U turn coming in from the. Uh, Urshifu gonna go back, bring that Celesteela back out, but 
Uh, I'm pretty sure now that we've seen uh, you turn a couple of times now in this set that that is a choice scarf locked uh, Urshifu and so you know now it's just a case of redirecting the attack launching out an oblivion wing into that Urshifu um, and you know eventually at some point you'll get into a position where Celesteela is in front of Regilecki and Incineroar uh, at that point you can just launch attacks into it really nice and freely um, and there's not really a lot that Narrowich can can do if we are correct indeed <laughs> as the timer mm -hmm. uh, battle timer comes up into the field <laughs> um yeah uh, the game has said that this guy uh, we've had too much switch this has been too long right um, <laughs> this yeah. has been too long um and at this yeah, point so like it doesn't it doesn't even matter what what, what, what the, what's going to happen in this turn as you know regardless of what happened in this turn az still has the upper advantage in terms of the pokemon number so it is it is already a game for Izzy here. Yeah, exactly. It's that that out. Surging Strikes did almost nothing. Uh, the Oblivion Wing's gonna go into that Urshifu. Looks like it's gonna be the game that decides looking at how much time is left in the turn. Um, who's, mm -hmm. win, who's gonna win, but I think we all know that Eze is gonna be coming out on top, and uh, that takes this set from 4-1 uh, four, uh, four to 4-2 four in favor of Thailand uh, going into the rest of the weekend. Right, so I think uh, you know. Again, this is uh, this is just a little bit of a, a preview of what might uh, what we might see, you know, in the next stage of the uh, tournament of a World Cup of Pokemon VGC. As both of these teams, of course, Thailand and Argentina, are both qualified for the next stage mm -hmm. of our tournament. And now that you've seen a lot of sessions here from Thailand <laughs> and Argentina, you could definitely say and. I can confidently say as well that, well, there's going to be more of the switch-ins on the next stage of the tournament. <laughs> that certainly is, especially if they keep bringing those sort of eventual teams that uh, looks like mm -hmm. there was a few when we had a look at the uh, matches that have already gone on in this round. But I, I think that's a uh, set for now. Uh, we're going to take a short break now and come back very soon with our next match uh, with uh, Belgium versus Japan. 